Welcome back to the Financial Minute. As always, so glad to have you here. My name's Josh, and today we're going to be talking about a crisis. Or is there one? Or will there be one? There's people saying a crisis is coming basically all the time. There always has been. Crises get people's attention, they get clicks on YouTube and elsewhere, so it always pays to have a good crisis. It also always pays to have a good crisis in politics, because then you can kind of get what you want. When there's no crisis, you're not needed. A politician likes a good crisis. But is there a crisis coming similar to the one we had in 2008, or is it going to be even worse? And what are some people saying about it? Let's check it out. Right after this, of course. Will this crisis be worse than the 2008 crisis? I don't know. Some people think it will be, will be way worse. I do know the numbers are pretty extreme. And there is inflation. Uh, despite what people may say, when you print tons of money, I mean, there's only so many things to spend money on. Pr printing more money creates more money chasing fewer items and objects and services. So very few new services under the sun and very few new items under the sun. Everything is kind of the same. Of course there are, you know, new... Like 20 years ago you didn't have Netflix and you didn't have... Uh, what else do we have new in the last 20 years? Well, we didn't have Amazon. Well, we did have Amazon actually. 20 years ago we had Amazon. Barely. Not really though. Most of us didn't know about 20 years ago. 20 years ago was 2001. Well, of course, we all know what happened in 2001 uh, with the towers. Uh, what was going on back then? Not a whole lot on the internet. Uh, we had PlayStation 1, right? I think I had a PlayStation 1 console. In fact, I think I was playing PlayStation 1 in 2001 when, the, when September 11th happened. was actually playing Gran Turismo 2, if I remember correctly. Anyway, so there was some stuff online back then. Uh, we didn't have internet at our house. A lot has changed since 2001. But really nothing under the sun is new. It's just, you know, slightly reimagined. And there's a lot more on the internet. There are a lot more ways to spend money, I suppose. People now buy digital art. What is digital art? You buy the m makings of an artist on in you know in binary numbers. You know, ones and zeros, that's basically what digital art is. That's what everything is online. It all comes down to uh, numbers in certain orders. But people now spend lots of money on digital art. Okay, I'm going up, down a rabbit trail, I know. Back to the point. When you create more money out of thin air, you have m more dollars chasing the same amount of items. Therefore, your dollars are worth less. Uh, people can argue that, but the fact is inflation is created when you create more money. The question is how much inflation. That's where, you know, it's negotiable. Nonetheless, we have inflation, lots of governments printing lots of money to help us out of the pandemic. And we have these little things called derivatives. Derivatives. What are derivatives, you ask? Derivatives are basically a way for somebody to, I want to say gamble, but it kind of is a gamble. But they're, they're investment tools to in to invest or basically bet on what somebody else is betting on. So it's a bet on a bet. A derivative is a way to bet much more riskily and basically multiply the ability to make money. So with a derivative, if a stock swings, let's say 
10%, your derivative could literally double or triple depending on uh, the risk factor. Whereas with a stock, you know, it can go up, it can go up 100%, but you can never really lose, I mean, I, you can only lose 100%, but generally you don't usually lose 100%. With a derivative, especially when you're using other people's money and you're loaning money to buy derivatives, you're not even using your own money, you're leveraging other people's money, you can actually not just lose 100%, you can lose more than 100% on a derivative. You can actually owe money on a derivative. So the risk factor is a lot higher. The SEC regulates risky investments heavily. You know that there's rules against investments that are extremely risky. Uh, they seem to look the other way though when it comes to derivatives because derivatives have grown in popularity to the point where there is almost 800 trillion dollars give or take in the derivatives market versus 90 trillion in the stock market. That's, that's amazing. I didn't know there was that many dollars in print. There's not, that's the problem. It's a card tower. There's more money in the derivatives market than there is money. And a lot of this money is leveraged, heavily leveraged. So the, the money that they're investing in these derivatives is you know, money they loan at an interest rate. Just to give you some numbers to compare to, there's approximately one and a half trillion dollars in crypto throughout the whole world in every cryptocurrency imaginable. There's only one and a half trillion dollars. Military spending around the world is only two trillion dollars. That's for every government. Two trillion dollars. If you were to add up every single inch of real estate around the globe, we have $270 trillion. The world's debt is $280 trillion. The world's entire wealth is $360 trillion. These are all massive numbers, yet there's almost $800 trillion in the derivatives market and little, little ruling on what can and cannot happen in the derivatives market. The government just seems to look the other way. I'm not a huge fan of the government sticking their nose in everybody's business, but this seems to be a bit of a bubble of sorts. And when it pops, what are the consequences? Now, some would say a crisis like the world has never seen. Think about it. If all of a sudden liquidity dries up and these people loaning money to these people that buy all of these derivatives want their money back, call you know, call in their money, these these loans will will basically go unpaid because they can't just pull the money out of these derivatives. They're not liquid. And a lot of these loans are sold into investments, which are supposedly not that risky, so they're owned in a lot of different funds. In both Dalio, he's the guy that owns the huge fund, actually the largest fund in the world, and Warren Buffett both think 2021 is the year for a crash. They're prepared for a big crash. There's lots, lots more to this. I'll put some links down in the description below for you to do your own research. Let me know what y'all think. Do you think 2021 is a year for a crash like we've never seen before? Do you think it's due to the derivatives market? It's very complex, I will be honest. I don't quite understand all of it. I do understand the big numbers though, and it's amazing how much money is in the der derivatives market and how it affects everybody because everybody owns investment portfolios uh, and these loans that pay for a lot of these derivative investments or in a lot of these uh, portfolios, whether we realize it or not. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. As always, guys, remember, only you can make your financial dreams come true. Don't delay. Get started today. Keep investing. Just maybe, you know, you got to look into 
less risky investments. Definitely don't be going out lending money to buy uh, these types of investments. Highly risky. If you do, make sure you know what you're doing. I'll see you on the next video. Be safe. God bless. Bye.